As the population ages, experts say that the current institutional model of care needs to change to better support aging patients. Dr. Ivy Bourgeau, a professor at the University of Ottawa, says that moving towards home care is an important step to cut costs and improve quality of care. Gregory Heyer, who studies health systems with Professor Bourgeau, says that restructuring the workforce is necessary to achieve this. People are living longer and people are also having fewer children or having children later. So that's why the milestone in 2015, the proportion of seniors surpassed that of youth under 15 for the first time ever, and that's only going to continue to grow, which then means the, the dependency ratio, if you will, the, the number of working age people for every person over 65 continues to decrease. So that, that's also where, where some of the strain comes from. Dr. Ivy Bourgeau says that the current healthcare system is outdated in the face of these strains. The architecture of it was created in the 1960s, where we had a very different um, type of demographic pyramid or age pyramid. You know, that's been reversed now. The structure of the healthcare system, you know, was created at a time where we had very different demographics. In addition, she says that shifting gender dynamics play a role in the aging community moving away from home care. There are more women who are working, women working longer. Um, and so you don't have that, you know, for the lack of a better term, a reserve army of labor, of carers in the community of, you know, women and sisters and aunts. And and, uh, and it's not to say that the only carers are women, but that these changing gender dynamics do have an impact on, on what's happening. The current acute model of care is not only more expensive, but also less desirable for patients. The acute care or institutional care model that's persisted for so long, is it's an expensive model, and it's certainly cheaper to keep people at home, and uh, often people do want to stay at home as they age because that's a familiar environment, they value their independence, and, and so on. But trying to, to reorient a health system that, that's really been built on a very acute care model, uh, hospital care, is as I've been described back in the 60s and 70s, it's, it's very difficult to change that. That's so entrenched. But reorganizing the system and creating an appropriate workforce won't be easy. You can't just wave a magic wand and say, boom, we're going to have, you know, everything delivered by home care without there being a consequent and parallel examination about how you are going to deploy a whole health workforce. Such a shift would require a change in the culture of the healthcare workforce. It's been designed by healthcare professionals for healthcare professionals rather than having the patient at the center of the healthcare system. And that requires a bit of a culture shift as well to look at the, the healthcare needs and healthcare delivery from the patient perspective. So, for example, things like more, more house calls again by, by physicians, so bringing the services to the patient rather than the patient to the services. And this involves cooperation of many sectors. There's no way that one care professional group will be able to know all um, that, they, that they will need to know for someone who's suffering from multiple chronic conditions. The reason why we have you know, specialization is because it's difficult to, to maintain all of that knowledge base. Um, so how to work much more collaboratively, both you know, within medicine, between primary care physicians and specialists, and also with other health professionals, nurse practitioners, public health nurses, occupational and physiotherapists, etc. But before any changes are made, more information is needed. It's really quite shocking just how little we know about the, the people who are actually delivering this care, the unregulated health workforce. So in Ontario, the personal support workers or PSWs who deliver the vast majority of the care that, that these people receive. And yet there's so little known about this workforce in terms of demographics, numbers, training, gender issues. Uh, it, it goes on and on. And yet these people are the ones who are really at the front line looking after our, our parents and grandparents. And there's, there's so little known there. So before any really good policy decisions can be made and knowing where to invest to get the, the biggest bang for the buck or to, to have the, the greatest impact, we need to know much more about the health workforce. Changing the health workforce is just one important piece of a bigger picture when it comes to properly serving the aging population. If you don't plan on what is the health workforce who's going to deliver
deliver those new programs, those new services, those new models, and figure out how we're going to train them and deploy them and remunerate them and have them work together and integrate, boy, you're missing a whole piece of the puzzle, a really important piece of that puzzle. So that's one of the things that we really wanted to try to emphasize is you have to take uh, explicitly what are the health workforce implications, and that needs to be part of your whole planning process. For Evidence Network, this is Dane Wanyarachige.